No, wait. <laughs> this is Popper to the People, episode one. My name is Chris. Here we go. My co-host is Matt. Hey, hey. Also go by Tuna. Tuna. Okay. How you doing, Matt? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Sweet. Glad to hear it. So, uh, first time recording a podcast. We're going to see how this goes. Yep. I'm kind of, uh, kind of nervous, kind of excited. Cool. Well, actually, um, according to some of your texts, I, you kind of figured this was going to be the end of the world, I think, in, in your opinion. Yeah. Well, you know, I figured the end of the world would be pretty similar to this. Uh, me on any kind of public access to, uh, uh, audio show definitely seems like it should be the end of the world indeed. Public access. <laughs> I just I was reading your text in this kind of whiny like my five year old daughter's voice. I don't want to do a podcast. I had to I had to coerce you into doing this pretty hardcore. So it was it was definitely appropriate into uh, imagining that because yeah, okay, that's cool. probably how it sounded. Fair enough. Fair enough. So um, good place to start. Obviously, the name Popper to the People. So um, what is this podcast about? And um, I was listening to uh, Monday Night Magic. Um, on the MTG cast network and uh, Chris Otwell was uh, encouraging people who had ideas for podcasts and um, you can, is the first episode going to be whiny five year old bitch? Is that what the idea? Okay. You, you just shake, you can talk. No, no. Oh, okay. I, well, unless you want it to be, that's cool. I was, I'm, I've been, I've been encouraging Matt um, to take notes as to what our episode titles are going to be. So, um, but we're, we're, I was listening to Monday Night Magic and Chris Otwell was bringing up, um, the fact that he was encouraging people who were listeners to try their hand at putting out podcasts. And I've been playing MTGO quite frequently and Popper is something I've been breaking into. Is it bad if I can't hear either of us in the heads? No, it's fine. You're fine, dude. Cause if you look at those little blips that are on our recording screen right there. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's us talking. That's the visualization of us talking. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So, um, dude, your voice looks gay. I don't know if you noticed that. I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I was looking at it, and something that's kind of popper has been something that's been interesting me a lot lately, and also, um, kind of budget-oriented type builds. Um, you know, standard. Uh, Popper feeling more of that legacy need, but really just uh, looking into how you can still have fun at Magic without necessarily having to go after the chases. You know, before before I knew what Popper was and before I played on MTGO, um, I'd always looked at decks online, and I, the budget decks always did interest me. I always clicked on them just to give them a look and see what people were were doing with the you know a budget setting. And um, when you first told me about Popper and you know, I didn't I didn't have the complete knowledge of the back catalog, but once I started tinkering around with it, I mean, it it's a great great way to play the game, especially for you know, like I said, for the budget. Yeah. And so I, I think really the angle we're going to kind of take with this is that we're fairly new to the popper format, so we want to approach this from a uh, people who are interested in broaching the area of popper. We're right there with you, and we want to be the the voice of of the new people, and as well as if you're well uh, versed in the popper format, you know, and and you want a way to, to to make your voice heard, you know, get get in on our email, which we're in the process of setting up, and and get in on the podcast, that type of thing. So we we want to approach it from that direction, definitely. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. So, I guess jumping into the first topic then, uh, as as is customary with the first episode, would be uh, who are you and when, how did you get introduced to magic? So, we'll go ahead and start with, with Matt over here. Okay, well, I've been in magic um, not quite two years. Um, actually, the uh, the host of the show here, Chris, is the one that got me into it, him and our other buddy, Travis. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, they introduced it to me, and they built my first deck for me, which was, a, I believe, a white-red Boros deck. And um, it just, it took off, man. It wasn't even, it wasn't even a week later, and I'd already had 50, 100 bucks vested into it. Bought my first fat pack with Zendikar, and 
it just exploded from there. I mean, I took it to a whole new level, and now I'm playing with pretty nice decks, um, have a good idea of the game. You know, every once in a while I have to look up a rule here and there, but uh, other than that, just having a great time playing. Awesome. So, as far as me personally, who introduced me? That would be the uh, the internet famous nerdcore rapper Beefy. <laughs> oh yeah, Beefy, Beefy, Beef Thompson. So I started right before, right right as Time Spiral was kind of putting out their theme packs. Right before Lorwyn hit, I was assistant manager at GameStop, and that was when GameStop was still having their booster packs and their theme packs actually available at the stores. And oh, that'd have been nice. Yeah, it was it especially it was it was equal parts nice and and a little too tempting to deal with, especially when they when you're sitting there staring at them for an eight hour shift. So, um, Travis, some, some inventory go missing every t- every now and again. <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, okay. Definitely not. But um, Travis, um, who you mentioned, uh, Travis and I have been in bands together for about four years, and he and I picked it up at the same time and. Um, we'd actually done shows with Beefy, and so we we each bought a theme deck, and he had a deck from Odyssey, I want to say it was, back with Threshold, which is an old mechanic, um, and just pounded our faces in with that, and, and that's kind of how we learned learned our chops, so that's that's kind of how I got my introduction, but as far as, you know, what would you say your your favorite, what your favorite method of playing is right now? What what do you like to play? Um, right now, I really I really like control. I do believe blue is uh, my favorite color to play. Um, I really like controlling what my opponent does. And currently, my favorite deck that I like to play is my uh, white blue Venser deck. Um, pop things in and out of the battlefield. Use that to my advantage. And um, if I get off his ultimate, obviously it's pretty much game over. That's currently my favorite way I'm going. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely, I'm definitely more of an aggro player at heart, I think. Um, I like, I like my, (laughs) I like, I like my Boros deck. I, I honestly, I'm, I'm a hardcore limited player. And I think that's kind of where the idea for a budget theme deck, uh, excuse me, a budget theme podcast really came into, started, started coming into my mind because limited is is a great way to eat up the old bankroll definitely you do two or three drafts a day over the course of a weekend and you can watch those tickets just get sucked out and what's what's really scary about that is online it's so much more accessible you know just like you said just pop in a paypal thing a couple clicks here and there next thing you know you spent 50 bucks in tickets and buying more cards online it's definitely Definitely a, a little evil there. Most definitely, most definitely. So, and uh, what what initially introduced me to Popper, um, actually, I think we'll we'll address that a little bit later. We got that as a topic a few points down, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. What I did want to address, since we do want to be a little bit topical with the news, is of course the huge elephant in the room, which would be the announcement of new Phyrexia. Yeah, yep. Yeah, everybody, I think, had a good idea that it was going to be New Phyrexia. Me, personally, I wanted it to be the other way around, but, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Definitely excited for it. I like the few spoilers that they've released so far. I'm getting uh, pretty excited for them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, what what I what I noticed, and I agree with you, it, it, it's a pretty obvious, well, of course it was going to be New Phyrexia, but I think that it it just makes sense. I mean, from a from a standpoint of looking at the mechanics of Infect, it, it just it just totally made sense for them to say, New Phyrexia, we're gonna have the the side that uses this mechanic be the ones who at least won. And and I mean from a from a story from a story standpoint, we don't know if it's yeah they won for now and the Mirans might eventually win at, at a later date point in time. We don't we don't know any of that sort of thing, but. Just from the fact that, well, they introduced in fact, which is love it or hate it, it's it's definitely a mechanic that has really changed the face of constructed and limited. Oh yeah, I mean when when we were playing with uh, our buddy Travis, and you know he's been <laughs> in and out of the game <laughs> lately for the last year or so. But we first played him, and he saw that infect for the first time. He about lost his shit, you know. It, yeah, he quit again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you played Menser and made an emblem, and he quit again. <laughs> 
definitely. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, so what I thought was really interesting from a flavor standpoint, and, and I'm not I'm not a huge flavor guy. I mean, it's yeah, I'll take it or leave it. But what what I did really appreciate was the irony of the fact that the Phyrexians are now the ones that are kind of there, there's a predator for each color. So there's effectively five different predators, five different aspects of Phyrexians, and now the Mirans are pushed back and they're like, we need to unite, which is kind of like what the Phyrexians used to be. So there's almost that 180 turn on both of their sides, which you know maybe someone who's a little more into the story or someone who's a little more into it probably saw coming, but for me, I was just like, oh, hey, that's a really cool twist. Well, like you said earlier, you know, most people anticipated this the way it was going to be, especially because of the the ratio of uh, cards. Uh, I believe Scars of Mirrodin was, what was it, 2080, and then they went to Besiege, which was 50-50, and then I believe the, the next one's going to be back to the 80-20 on the other side, though. And so I'm pretty sure that's the way that most people were anticipating it to be the the new Phyrexia set. You're probably wrong. You're gonna get called on it. You're gonna get flamed. Oh, that's fine. Oh, the, I told you I got flamed on the, See, the boards the other day. Seg, nice segue. Actually, this is what I, I wanted this to happen because I wrote this huge glaring note on our notes. It says Tuna's MTG Salvation Forum story. Oh yeah. So I want you. To, I want you to tell this story. So I've I've been a reader of the forums for quite a while now, but I've never actually contributed or put in my two cents. Lurker. Yeah, exactly. And finally, I get into the, the rumor board, and I'm reading about the, the new sword, obviously, the um, of War and Peace, and everybody's trying to guess and, you know, give their opinions or thoughts of what the what the abilities and the mechanics are going to be and everything like that. And I just did a quick Google search and just happened to find this picture of what I thought was the real sword, and I kind of still do, actually. I don't haven't had anything prove me wrong yet. And it was the set from New... You know, it had the new Phyrexia symbol on it, and so I thought, hey, you know, for once I'll post on this board, since, you know, I'm always reading it. So I, I whipped up a username really quick, logged in, posted the link, and immediately, not even seconds go by, but everybody's flaming me, just ripping me a new one, saying how, oh yeah, brand new poster, one post, you know, fake, fake flamer, you know, just, they're trolling. I mean, oh, it was, it was a mess. I, I think technically you were trolling. Well, but. they they thought I was trolling, but I really wasn't. I was <laughs> thought I thought I was contributing to the online rumor community, but they didn't see it that way. I'm pretty way. sure it's legit. I think it was confirmed. I, they removed my post. The moderators <laughs> removed my post because I was trolling. Did they block your IP? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's an amazing story to me. <sighs> yeah. So let's do this. Let's take a quick break. Let's grab another beer. Yeah, grab another beer. Make sure what we're doing actually sounds okay, and then we'll be right back with the guests. So, pop it to the people. We will be right back. Pop it to the people. We're Back. We're back. So, yeah, and now, and now, all the stupid stuff we're saying is is gone. It's gone. It's yep. Gone. The the whole. Yep. So, well, so far it looks like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, and uh, it's coming across okay. So that's awesome. Drinking beer and talking. Yeah, pretty much. Hope you guys enjoyed your break. It was considerably longer for us than it was for you. You can like edit to where there's no break at all, or how how did the user how did the user experience that break? You know, I'm I'm on the fence about that. I was kind of thinking. Uh, I was listening to Beefy's uh, Beef Thompson in Space, and it's got that the lazy podcast. Mm-hmm. It's got that track with uh, From the Dust, uh-huh. Gasping for Air, my old band, uh-huh. with him on it. And I was kind of thinking of using that for the intro music. Gotcha. So, you know, just kind of like shout out to Beef. Uh huh. Either that, or it'll get him to listen. Will it? I don't know. Okay, he doesn't play Magic anymore. We could make him. Uh, yeah. We're trying to get people to play Popper, though. Oh, yeah. Or, or at the very least, kind of reevaluate and maybe look at some budget-type stuff. Maybe a new way of playing the game. Is it like trying to get people to turn sides, like to the forest or to the dark side? All will be one. <laughs> 
the completion has been achieved. Yes, that's right. I mean, yeah. But they spelt it funny. <laughs> we've, been, we've been over this. We have. We we've have. Been over this. So, um, let me see. Where are we at on our notes here? Why play Popper? I don't know. Because Chris and Matt told you to. That's good enough reason. Write it down. Yeah, because we are obviously... I mean, with, with, with Tuna over here getting threads banned left and right, and me not knowing what I'm talking about to begin with, I think that we are by far the popper experts. Yeah, I mean, clearly that just gives us the credentials right there. No, I think the easiest way to approach it is to say, why do I play popper? What what was it that kind of, once I started getting into it, what was it that really appealed to me? Aside from the fact that the deck I built was seven tickets, <laughs> which was really cool. To begin with, uh, and a good portion of that was the counter spells from Master's Edition and a, a couple of other blue spells that were really kind of a little more on the expensive side to get me going. What really strikes me about it, especially being a limited player, is that it's it's it reminds me a lot of limited play, where you, you see the commons a lot more, a lot more, and. I don't know, just the, the flow of the game, it really reminds me a lot more of drafting a deck and playing it. At least in my opinion. So, you know, you're nodding and that's not really going to come through on the audio feed. Oh, oh, sorry. I, I thought, you know, they could hear my nods. You said these were good mics. But they're not that good. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, honestly, I play Popper because you tell me to. Yeah. So. No, well, aside from that, um, after he introduced it to me and I really started sinking my teeth into it, I figured out that I really quickly that I enjoyed it and <clears throat> I do like seeing the vast collection of cards that people have or the interesting mechanics from the past that I have no idea what do um sometimes people get irritated with me when I'm playing online because half the time I, you know I, I'm on my turn I have to read what they what they played and what they're doing I have to hover the mouse over and click on the the special thing you know ninjutsu when I first saw that I <laughs> about lost my my stuff and I didn't know what that did and um you know the what was the the one that's they can cast it from there as many times or uh the fire I I forget but um yeah there's all kinds of crazy mechanics that I'm learning and it just it, the game's really fun. Like like you were saying, it kind of feels like more like a draft each time because you get to experience brand new cards almost all around the board when you're playing people online. One of the topics I wanted to discuss probably in the next episode is going to be if, uh, the idea of like ninjutsu, or if you're new to Popper, or if you're a relatively new Magic player. Uh, again, you know, trying to make this podcast a podcast for people who are newer to the format or or maybe newer to magic in general types of card mechanics that maybe you're not familiar with you know, ideas of like ninjutsu and i would have to look back to my deck and and look into some some more mechanics and and there's definitely there's definitely archetypes of course storm which I, I think you that might. that's the mechanic I was trying to think of. I was just going to look that up. That's exactly what I was just it's thinking. Storm, of. yeah, okay. yeah. That deck, that that mechanic kills me online. Yeah. So what was interesting to me is the first I built my popper deck and I went into the casual room and I played the very first game I played, and this guy's playing, and this was before I, I kind of had the inkling I was going to do a podcast about it. So I, I didn't write it down. I wish I did, or at least took some screen caps of it, but. This guy's got this green ramp deck. <coughs> Excuse me. And so he starts ramping and ramping and ramping, and he's laying down on these commons, and he's ramping into something. It's just like there's there's a very familiar vibe of this to me. And he ramps to eight, and he plays an Ulamog's Crusher. Oh, Eldrazi. Exactly. Just, this is an Eldrazi green deck, <laughs> but it's all commons. And so there's definitely, in, there's, there's definitely archetypes, and there's definitely this kind of echoing of the standard format and you know there's 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 popper standard there's popper classic so you can limit yourself to the standard environment you can go as far back as legacy um you, you can there's just a wide range and it really forces you to to just access a completely different 
different part of your your library. And and once you start looking at these commons as the only thing you can use, you start to see these really like Storm, you start to see these really sick and twisted combinations you can come oh, up yeah, with. Oh yeah, very sick and twisted. So I mean, you know, the other one, the affinity and, and the artifacts, you know. You, and so the goal for for next episode that I'm already kind of brewing up for for next week. So I mean, if your estimations are correct, it'll be the second of the three episodes before we run out of stuff to talk about, right? Right. right. <laughs> so uh, the 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 second episode, you know, will be of course l- like I discussed the uh, card mechanics that you might need to start familiarizing yourself with uh, a couple of the arch the archetypes that that exist the the decks that you need to look out for and then then go from there and i mean the other thing from the more budget conscious side i i have in my mind to start limiting myself to maybe spending 25 30 bucks a month on mtgo which of course will make my wife very happy yeah, that's definitely a good goal. Um, I definitely need to get down to something like that. <laughs> but but to not only to not only do that, but to say, okay, here's my here's my say thirty dollars. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna push for the thirty instead of the twenty five, especially if my wife does decide to listen to this, which you know she hears me enough. I can't imagine why she would want to. But <laughs> here's thirty tickets that I get a month. How can I effectively use these and? You know, Popper is definitely a way to do that. There's the two man queues in Popper where right now it's a, you know, you pay your two tickets and if you win your two man queue, you get a booster pack of M11. So, which, just using right round numbers, you know, you could sell that off to a bot or for a three. So, I mean, you're theoretically trying to find a way to go infinite with that. Or I could still use it for draft. And I mean, I'm, or if I wanted to, if I really wanted to, I could use that 30, or I could not use any of it. I could save it for five months, and I could buy a Jace. Oh, you know, one see, Jace. <laughs> yeah, see, and there's your there's your dilemma. And, and that, that therein really lies the issue of why I have a hard, hard time justifying playing straight-up standard and why I've kind of moved away from it. I mean, I'll still draft, and... I, it's it's just I I want to I want to try this experiment, and you know I'm not. I think it would be really kind of a neat idea if there was anyone else who's listening, you know, who was interested in pursuing that with me. Even if it's a hey, I, I was thinking of doing something like that. Maybe I'll start up a separate MTGO account with a different username, and you know I spend a hundred dollars a month on MTGO, but I'm going to make a separate one and put just thirty into that and try it out with this in mind and see what happens. And then when I do draft, and if I do draft a a mythic or something that is a money card, just you know, sell it. Sell it. Or you know if fortune smiles on me and I do manage to do an, enough drafts and get a decent standard deck. I mean the sky's the limit, but I don't want to actively Spend sink money, money into sink it. Sink money into building a competitive standard deck when I could build a competitive popper deck for a fraction of the for cost. For a fraction of the cost. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it just it seems like it, it just seems like a different way to do it. You know, married with two kids and you know, house payment and all the other payments, and it's just something I kind of wanted to toss around and just make my own little experiment. You know, it's it's. Being more responsible, but yet at the same time still being able to have fun with the game. Oh yeah, it's very fun. Yeah, and especially if you do, if you are a drafter. I mean, I've got, you know, I, I think I've got thirty virulent wounds, and you know, Lord knows how many flare husks in my <laughs> collection. So I mean, there's always the casual room, there's always the tournament practice room. It's like, well, throw four of these flare husks in and see what happens. I mean, I can get. You know, a playset of the artifact lands that I need for a few tickets. I don't have to spend this much money for Gideon and Jace the Mind Sculptor, and or, or you know, not even to go to that extreme. But say I spend, I, I drop the money on building a Cobblade deck and realize, you know what, I really don't like Control. Yeah. <laughs> well, tough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm playing Control until it rotates, man. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not enjoying myself as much <laughs> as I could. So. And you know, recently I I think the Jace TMS even 
got more expensive online than it is in real life now. <laughs> which is sad. Yeah. I couldn't even burn it to stay warm if I needed to, if it's digital. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, the other thing I wanted to propose is right out of the gate. I, you I want to propose to me? No, I'm married. You're married, too. Oh, well, so, two yeah. wrongs make a right. Mm. This ain't Canada, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Eastern Washington. <laughs> While we do recognize out-of-state civil unions, we do not allow our own. <laughs> FYI. Uh, so... Nice, yep. nice to throw you off topic, off track. Yeah, well, the goal with the podcast is to be able to go off track. Gotcha. To, that's I, I feel that's when we are our funniest. So, what I wanted to propose is that we, right off the bat, um, open it up for a contest. And a contest? Question mark. A contest! Exclamation point. Oh. So. I was thinking the prize would be the other nice part about doing a popper budget podcast is that the prize doesn't have to be that expensive. The prize is equivalent <laughs> to, to a ticket online. <laughs> no, a ticket online. No, a fraction of a ticket. No, I was thinking something like you know maybe just something as simple as a mirrored and besieged booster pack. How about I'll sign their card? You'll sign their card. Yeah, they online. Even, yeah. Say you know just sign it. The man who the man who, with the ban. <laughs> the tuna. <laughs> the man with the band, tuna. <laughs> Sign your foil island. The man with the band. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think um, what I would like to introduce is a segment uh, of something like people who could email us good stories of when they punted a game. Where they had it in the bag or... It was close to being in the bag, and they just horribly misplayed. <laughs> I mean, everyone's got those stories. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. those are some of the funniest stories that I think you could hear. So are we going to open up to people emailing us with the stories, and then whoever, like, how are we going to judge this to decide the winner? I think the one that probably makes us laugh the most. Gotcha. So, and I mean, I know that once this gets posted onto MTGCast, there's going to be a comment section, so you can feel free to leave it in the comment section. Um, we've got to set up the Gmail account. Actually, um, my thought was P, the number two, the letter T, and P, of course, for power, uh, popper to the player. People. People. See. See, that's how new we are to this. Popper to the people at gmail.com. And that's G M A L E dot com. That's not what it is. Oh, that's not what it is that's at all. That's not what it is. Oh. This is uh, taking a really weird turn. I need to go change my email account. How many of these beers have you had? Um, hmm. I Enough. You, you're starting to get really friendly with that microphone. Well,. If I was any closer, I'd be tonguing it, and I don't think my wife would approve. No. I gotta be in the room with you, and I don't approve. Especially because I don't know where this mic's been. No. it's It's been at my drummer's house. Yikes. So, and I don't know if you've heard about drummers. So, but, you know, I kind of wanted to gauge your reaction to that. Maybe like a... And, and, you know, maybe the person could say, hey, I would like the booster pack, or I would like a signed... Digital... No, not foil dig- not island. digital. Not digital. I've got I've got foil lands, man. A digital foil, a digital foil island, signed by Tuna, the man with the band, or a pack of mirrored and besieged. I'll spring for the besieged. I'll do it. You'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Well, I mean, well, in that case, I'll spring for the sharpie to oh, sign to oh, sign the island. Well. I mean, there's going to be all of, what, two people listening to this? So out of those two people, there has to be at least one winner. Yeah. I mean, We're excluded, so there probably won't be anyone that wins. Oh, <laughs> yikes. So, um, but I don't I don't know if they have to listen to make sure everything's okay before they can post it, so we might not actually have anyone that listens. So, but I think we can open it up. And really, all you need to do to, to win the first one, I think, would be just to, I, I guess, you know, just kind of... Maybe let us know you're out there. Let us know what you would like to hear. You know, as far as you know, a popper slash budget friendly you know, friendly podcast. Give us some ideas. Hey, could you address this? Um, you know, 
I'm a new player. You know, this is kind of the direction I'd like to see. These are topics I'd like you to address. You know, regarding budget, regarding popper. Hey, I think this is a good idea. Hey, I think this is bad. You know, just your general feedback type thing. Leave it in the comments. Or, or I'm an extremely competitive popper player, and you should talk about this so that more people will play with me and yeah. or not hate me. Yeah. Or I play Storm, and I think you're just a whiny little bitch. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So sign that island. <laughs> Because I want to use it as toilet paper. And don't forget to leave your uh, MTGO uh, username so we can get you your prize if you win, and or your phone number. No, I'm just kidding. No, I wouldn't say phone number. But we are. I mean, we'll. I mean, email or email, of course, or your MTGO username. Some way, you know, we'll announce it online. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll work out the details. But we'll announce the winner with the username, and it will probably take, depending on how many people who listen to the first episode who give up five minutes in, who say, "Oh, it's just an introduction cast. We don't listen to the first one anyway." Because you know, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a Th- few. That'd be me. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there are a few people who are like, "You know, I never listen to the first episode. It's just the d the d bags introducing themselves, anyways." Right. So. Um, well, regardless, you know, even if you don't end up winning, you know, if you just, I just want to see you online, maybe just play a friendly game of Popper, you know? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, let me see, we should probably do some shout outs. I am on MTGO Online. My username is Grey Cat Records. I'm a member of the Limited Resources Clan. I am a huge fan of the Limited Resources Podcast. Ryan and Marshall are two, uh, it's it's probably I mean, no no hard feelings to any of the other podcasts on the network. I listen to to most of them and I love them all. But Limited Resources is by far my favorite podcast. I eagerly await every Friday afternoon to to hear what those guys bring to the table, and I really uh, in, enjoy what they bring. And you know, I, I I definitely enjoy being a member of that clan. So I would encourage. I don't. I'm not leaning towards starting a popper clan. I think that there's definitely a way to coexist with it. I would say if you were looking for a clan to join, join up limited resources because if you're a fan of drafting, or even if you're not, you know you could find a member of a limited resources clan to probably unload. I know I'm one of them to unload plenty of commons your way to start a popper deck. So. That would be cool to start a, a popper clan, now that you mention it. No. No? I already got a clan. Oh. <laughs> hmm. So, I mean, I mean, it's something we could, we could, you know, maybe potentially talk about, but I, I definitely, I, I think that there is a way to... Can you not be in more, more than one clan? No. We could totally make side accounts just for popper, like you were saying earlier, actually. Yeah, we could. We could do that, maybe, potentially, too. Does that violate the terms of... No, it doesn't violate the terms of service because we own both the accounts. That's true. We're going to get this podcast deleted. <laughs> My username is Matuna, by the way. It's M-A-T-U-N-A. I will play anybody, anytime, anywhere. It's not a threat or a challenge. I just like to play. He's just dirty. I'm dirty. Dirty, dirty. <clears throat> not as dirty as Storm, though. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be discussed next week. <laughs> so, or potentially two weeks. We're still... We're thinking... We're th- we're going to shoot for weekly, but it might be bi-weekly. I would like to do weekly. We used to hang out quite frequently. and Well, I mean, if, if bi-weekly could fit in, I mean, you know, whatever. Yeah, I think, I th- you know, I think that we are selling ourselves short on being able to do it weekly. I think we realistically could. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I played a Slivers deck the other day. Oh, I love Slivers. Oh, man. I didn't... I mean, I've only heard about slivers briefly a couple times, but I didn't know there were so many common slivers, <laughs> and all the slivers obviously benefit each other. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's obviously it's probably something we should talk about in a future podcast, but it annihilated me. Yeah, there's... And it's just great to be able to be like, yeah, I spent I spent three bu- I spent three tickets, four or five tickets on a deck, and it's it's a flaming piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> and but I only spent five tickets on what you want. Yeah, I mean you don't you don't feel guilty about that. No, you don't. And I mean you know back to like I was saying when you first got me into popper, I think my first deck I made I uh, three and a half tickets or so, and I even had a credit left over for next time when I bought a couple more cards for my next popper deck. 
Yeah. I mean, I think I have three popper decks now, and I've spent maybe maybe eight to ten tickets. Yeah, you and, you and your mill. That that's the de- that's the type I should have said earlier. What I that I love the most. Yeah, he's he's a Timmy. Yeah, definitely. He's Timmy. A, Timmy. He's a Timmy. I'm a Spike. So we can, you know, I, I think those traits in us will probably come out the more you get to know us. So, but next episode. The goal, you know, we'll, we'll just cover that briefly again, of course, will be archetypes, card keywords to look out for, some types of, you know, if... Ninjutsu. <laughs> storm. 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 And, you know, if you're not quite sure what you want to play, but you're interested in maybe starting a collection, some types of cards you might want to pick up, you know, that, you know, hey... What should I throw a couple of tickets at here and there as I'm kind of feeling my way is that, around? Is that what we're going to talk about next week? That's what we're talking about next week. Oh, that, that's a good topic. I'm excited. I think so. Yeah. That should give us at least two, three minutes. At least. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's there's no use in dragging out the inevitable. I mean, do you have anything else you want to add to this issue? Um, Other than I'm actually pretty excited to be doing this um i was a little timid at first and like you explained earlier it appeared to be uh, i was being a whiny little bitch about it and i might have been i probably was but it's actually pretty fun and i look forward to the next one can't wait it's just talking man it's just talking we just happen to have something recorded and we're putting it out there for other people to hear so i hope everyone out there who listened is enjoying it i hope you're looking for more uh i hope you can Leave your comments or questions and help fuel this thing. Uh, Until next time, my name's Chris. And this is Tuna. Okay, this is Popper to the People. Leave us an email at p2tp, and that is the number two, at gmail.com. Leave us a comment, and we'll get back to you. Just for the record, it's not Gmail as in M-A-L-E. It's not. It's M-A-I-L. Thanks, man. So, until next time. Thank you so much for listening, and we are looking very forward to what the future holds. Likewise, peace out. Word. That's it, man. Thoughts? Loved it. Loved it? Loved it. Wasn't so bad, huh? No. <sighs> I know. Oh. This is where you get the, the classy B roll. The B roll? The B roll after the credits roll. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, I mean Like if you had a you know, a row of chimes and if someone were to go like do all of them really quick. I can end with that. I can make your. I can. You were concerned about your voice. Yeah. I don't even like this. I gotta look up the the text you were because there was some crazy stuff you were saying. Here, here's the thing. Was this all last night? No. No. I know you were drunk and scared last night. But I mean, maybe it was like you like. Did you? Did I talk to you last night? Yeah, you did on the phone. Do you even remember that? No, because I mean, two days ago, you're like, here's the thing. I don't even know. If, I don't even know, I mean, because I don't even like the sound of my voice recorded. And, you know, there's, we don't, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm not that good of a player. I mean, we're going to run out of stuff to talk about anyway. People are going to know we're full of shit. Why did he would do that impression on it? <laughs> <laughs> I would have been rolling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are going to know we're full of shit, man. And, you know, because we're going to have, like, maybe three episodes. And then after after you can send done, I've been like, and this is exactly how I sounded in my mind. I, it was. Because <laughs> <laughs> and then the other because it, it was just it was just amazing. It, you have this long string. It's like five new text messages because I've got the 160 char- character limit. Uh-huh. It's just like you know, I was like, you're doing this. <laughs> I was like, it's gonna be fun. You know, it, it'll be fun. <laughs> You know, talk about the chime writing across. I'm trying to work, and you're having... It's like, I can see with a paper bag. <laughs> I remember, like, But what about this? I mean, what about...
what are we going to even say? 